For example, right, um, we know smoking is very bad for our health, right? If you smoke a lot, our lifespan will be shortened, right? So we don't smoke, we quit smoke. And the money we spent uh, on buying this cigarettes, we save that money, right? We save that money. And buying car is also a good, right? Buying car. You save the money and you, you buy a car by saving that money. But next day, you had an accident and you die. So if you look, if you look at that, this example, it is very weird actually, right? So what could have you done better? You actually did the best. You quit smoke, right? And you saved money and you bought a car, which is very good. But unfortunate event happened. You, you had an accident and you died. You couldn't have done much, right? You did the best, but still something very bad happened. So as I'm saying, right, this is life. Sometimes we do the best, sometimes doing the best thing brings the worst thing in our life. That's our life. We couldn't have done anything better. So most of the time, we don't have much choice in our life. We just have to accept the life as it is. But the choice we have, right, the choice we have is that um, what you want to do next, right? Um, what to do next. That's the only choice we have. So as I say, right, when an uh, unfortunate event happens in our life, we only have two choices. Right? One choice number one is that you want to remain broken, mentally, physically broken, or you want to move, you want to be better than the, uh, that you were uh, in those unfortunate events. But uh, as me, right, I would always choose no cho choice number two, you know, to be better than I was before, right? Because <clears throat> um, uh, if I give you an example, right, we have, let's say I have a $500, right, and I lost $50, right? So when I lost $50, <coughs> What I should do is that, oh, I lost $50, so I have to make sure I don't lose my $450, right? But most of the time what we do is that when we lost $50 and we don't care about the $450, this is the wrong way of approaching the life. So just like that, right, um, we have a 360 something day in our life, right? And we, when our one day, right, when our day, one day become a little bit bad, something bad happened in that one day, when our one day become a little bit weird, we should be even more careful that we don't uh, make our rest of the day of the year become bad, right? We have to be even more careful. Okay, my num day number one was not good, but the rest of the days, I make sure uh, it will be better. You know, that is the choice we have. So yes, we always have to take care of ourselves, right? Because um, when, when, uh, when we are in front of our teacher, master, our mother, we always feel that, oh, they are going to take care of us, right? Oh, he's my master, he's my mother, he's my father. Uh, they will take care of me. But it is not like that, right? Uh, we have a fun, right, as a parent, as a friend, as a uh, uh, I, you know, random people, right? We drink coffee, we have fun, we go to the beach, we swim, we do swimming, right? But at the end of the day, right, and we say, okay, bye-bye, we had a good day, and take care of yourself. Nobody say, okay, you know, I'm going to take care of you. Nobody say that. Because everybody knows that we cannot take care of other people, but we have to take care of ourselves, right? So it is very important for us that we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. Mm. So why do we need to take care, right? Why do we need to take care so much? Because uh, we are not dead, you know, we are alive. We are, we are living being, right? That's why we need to take care. Because anything uh, that is not dead, anything which is alive, always demand a care. For example, these flowers, right? If you don't care about this flower, and if they die, you don't care, right? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to take care of this flower. If you want them, 
if you don't want them alive, you know, living. But if you want this flower alive, then you just can't leave it like that, right? We need to water this flower. We need to make sure the temperature of this room is good for this flower. We have to do so many things to keep this flower alive. Because why? The flower is alive, it's not dead, right? So everything that is alive demands the care, right? Taking care. So, but I'm not saying uh, that <clears throat> I'm taking care of myself and you guys are not taking care of yourself. I'm not saying that, I don't misunderstood. Um, but, but when I see, you know, um, my friends, other people, right? I don't think that they do take care of themselves because uh, I think they live like a robot, you know, their life seems to be very robotic life. Yeah, so for example, right, when you wake up in the morning, right, uh, the first thing we do is always think about the reason why I say we live like a robot is because there's a reason, you know, maybe I'm wrong, right, but uh, we do the same thing all the time without thinking, you know, without being aware, without uh, analyzing anything. For example, when you wake up in the morning, right, the first thing we do is always to think about our problem. Uh, what is our problem? Then, then we wake up, then we drink the coffee, you know, then we dress, then we eat something that we eat all the time, right? Then we go to the office, we take the same uh, route to the office, right? Then, like, uh, so many things that we do, everything, you know, like, when we wake up and when, when we uh, uh, get up from the bed, we always get up from the same side of the bed, right? Always the right. Something like that, right? We always do the same thing throughout the day. That's why I'm saying, you know, we live like a robot. Yes, so, what I'm saying is that um, doing same things every day is not a problem. Huh? This is not a problem. But are you aware, are you mindful when you are doing the same thing throughout the day, right? If, uh, the, the reason why I think we live a very robotic life is that we just do things, just like a, you know, uh, a robot program programmed by a computer. You know, we do the same thing all the time. In the morning, afternoon, meet same people, talk same thing same job, you know, drink same coffee, right? I'm saying it looks like a robot, not because you are doing the same thing all the time, because there's no much thinking, you just do it, right? There's no much analyzing, you just do it, right? There's no much mindfulness, you just do it because you think, oh, that's what we do, but it is not what we do. The most important thing for us is to be mindful, to be aware of what you are doing. Are you even analyzing what you are doing? Does it make you happy? You know, what you are doing in your life. Is it that what you really want to do in your life? Or maybe somebody want me to do that thing, right? Is there a thinking involved in your life? Is there a mindful involved in your life? Is there awareness involved in your life? If there is no these three things, then you are just a robot, you know, in a human form. That's all we are. But uh, the problem is that, right, mm. if you do the same things, Every day, right, gradually it becomes our habit, right? And you know what is habit. Habit means easy. If you are happy to do certain things and doing things that become so easy, you know, so spontaneous, it's very easy, right? And when it becomes your habit, it is very difficult to change. Yes, and the biggest gift in our life, right, is uh, our ability to change, you know, the possibility to change. That is the biggest gift in our life, or maybe the biggest advantage of uh, impermanence. That's the biggest gift. Yes, then doing same things for all the time, right, um, living a robotic life. The biggest problem is that we don't get the chance to use or utilize the biggest gift, the greatest gift in our life, to change, right, to be better, to utilize the possibility to be the greatest, right, to be the happiest. Because we are doing the same thing for our last 30 years, 40 years, 20 years, right? And all of a sudden, someone asks you to do, okay, don't do this, you know, because if you do that, 
there's nothing good out of it. If you do that, something good gonna happen to you, you know. I mean, a great opportunity is awaiting you on the other side of the shore, right? But we are living the same life for 30, 40 years. Right? It becomes our habit. Then when we want to change, there's a fear, you know. We, we feel scared, we feel insecure, you know, we feel a sense of insecurity. Because why? Because of our habit living the same life for past 30, 40 years. That's why I'm saying always be a mindful, right? Always know what is happening within you. Always know, always try to be aware about your life. What is happening? Is it good or is it bad? Or, or should I change? Because if you trust in being aware and to understand or, or, or see your life clearly, is always there, right? It's living the same life for the past 30, 40 years and making it your habit, it hinders the possibility to change. And we are losing our biggest, greatest, best gift in our life. Yes, um, as I say, the, to be mindful, to know what is happening around you, right? It is important, you know why? For example, right, we are very busy human being, right? We don't have much time to gather, you know, meet friends, uh, especially meet our parents. We, we do work, you know. Then, like at the weekend, right, in the weekend, on the weekend, uh, we gather with our family, right? We have a dinner, let's say we have a dinner. But what we do, I mean, not all the people, but many young people, you know, what they do uh, when they are having a weekend dinner with the parents, they just play, you know, the text, right? The text. They socialize with some people that is like 1,000, 2,000 miles away from them, right? But the people, you know, your parents is literally next to you, but we don't have that time to talk to our parents, right? Because we are so, you know, not mindful. We are supposed to be talking to our parents, to friends that are next to us. Taking, of, taking care of their feelings, right? Asking them, how was your day? But instead, as I say, we are so habitual, you know, this, the, the uh, habit of you know, using phone is so, so, so hardwired in our brain that we couldn't much care about the people just next to us, right? So this is the problem um, happens when we are not mindful because we don't know what is happening just around you, right? So if you want to take care of your life or anything in your life, first you have to be mindful, right? Without mindful, you don't know what is happening. If you don't know what is happening, you don't know whether it's, it is good or bad, right? And there's no judgment, there's no um, preparation for anything. That's why it is very important for us to be mindful, you know? means that we need to, we must know what is happening in our life, what is happening around you. So if you have a, a problem with your body, you make sure you check your body, right? If you have a problem with your mind, you must know you have a problem with your mind and you have to attend you know, to that problem. You have to make sure you solve that problem. Yes, so to make it simple, if you want to boil an egg, right, you need to set a fire, right, and boil it, right. If you want that egg to be boiled, that's what you have to do, right. Not asking your shifu or master, oh, and pray to him, oh, master, make my egg boiled. That's a wrong way to do. Yes, so if you have a physical problem, First thing you need to see a doctor, you know, that's what they are for, right? Don't go to, you know, your, your teacher and ask to fix your physical problem. That's not what we do, right? And if you have a mental problem, then maybe you can see your teacher, right? That's what we are supposed to do, right? Don't, if you have a physical problem, see a doctor. And if the doctor couldn't, couldn't uh, fix it, then there's something wrong with your karma. Or then you can do certain things that is taught in Buddhism, right? But most of the people, what they do is that when they have a leg problem, when they have a business problem, all they do is pray, pray, pray. It doesn't work like that. 
So yes, um, maybe you guys think, oh, why mm, need to be mindful, right? Um, if, if you want to be the best or if you want to be better, right? Or if you want to avoid certain things, right? First, I mean, like, uh, to be uh, informative, to be very knowledgeable person is very important, most important thing, right? But it is, you can only be knowledgeable if you know what you need, right? If you are aware what you need in your life. If you are only aware or mindful, what is going wrong with your life? What is thing that you can do? What is thing that you cannot do? If you know that, right? But to know that thing, you have to know what is happening in your life to be aware. That's why to be a knowledgeable, successful is very important. But if you want that thing, you need to know what is happening with your life. For that, you need to be aware. You know? Don't be like a robot. That's what I'm saying. And about, so this is much of, uh, uh, there's nothing much uh, I want to share about now. I'm nothing much left that I want to share about, you know, being mindful, how to be happy, anything. But now about the puja, right? Um, to attend certain puja, you know, I'm not very big fan of puja. I like to study, teach, and practice, and also puja sometimes, very, not very often, sometimes I like to do puja. And it is not because puja is not important. I never say puja is not important. Puja is very important. But what is the purpose of doing puja, right? We believe in karma as a Buddhism, right? As a Buddhist, we believe a karma. What karma means? Karma is because, uh, the great master say, whatever happened in our life is based on karma, you know, based on what you did before or what you are and what you are doing right now. What make things happen in our life? That's a karma. There's a certain things that makes our life better. That's a good karma. There are certain things that bring bad things in our life. That's a bad karma, right? So karma is very important. Yes, so if you have a pure heart, right? Some people are like that, very pure. And whatever happening around them, I mean, good and bad, they are very calm. When bad things happen, oh, they think there must be a certain reason here to happen like that. You know, if someone say, oh, no problem, you know, it happens, right? That's the karma. If you have a good, clean, pure mind, even though bad things happen, you don't see it as a bad thing. You can understand it, right? And for like me, if I'm so, you know, short-tempered guy, it doesn't matter, small thing can bring so much pain, so much anger in me. Why? Not because, that, because of that problem, because I am a very short-tempered guy, right? Now you can see, you know, that's the karma. You are so short-tempered guy. Because of that, it doesn't matter, you know, how the, the size of the issue, you just burst out. If you are a good person, a good human being, you know, patient, generosity, love, loving and kindness, kind person, it doesn't matter how big problem is there. You always see in a positive way, right? That's the energy, you know, there's a positivity energy and negative energy. If you build a negative energy, negative things will happen to you. If you, if you build a positive energy, the positive things will happen to you. That's how it works. That's, that's, that's how the karma works. <clears throat> so, as I say, karma is very important, right? Doing good things, thinking good things, saying good things. But, now, how, when we pray to certain gods, right, God, we don't believe God created the world, but we believe in God, right? So there's like a long life, you know, Koyim uh, Pusa, long life, you know, Buddha. So, so we pray to them, how it work, right? We don't see them, we don't feel them. They're not around here. They're just a painting here. So when we do a prayer, how does it help? Is that, actually it's not very easy, simple to just explain, but, for me, uh, most of the time, how I think is that we have to believe in uh, a karmic connection, right? Connection. Connection um, is like, um, just give you, I, I'll give you an example, right? Um, based on this COVID-19, right? Something happened, right? Something, I don't know, someone ate a bat or maybe bat a bite someone or maybe other reason, but it happened a very remote place, you know, a small place, maybe in a lab, right? In a lab, maybe in America, maybe India, maybe in China, I don't know, right? Maybe in Taipei, I don't know. Something happened small somewhere in, a, some, in some place, right? But now, 
whole world is suffering. So if there is no connection, if it has nothing to do with other people, you know, other place, other location, why we are suffering now? Because all of us are mentally and physically connected in a certain way. That's why. So in that way, when we do a prayer to a certain you know, Buddha and Bodhisattvas, yeah, there's a connection. As we are being suffered by a COVID-19, there's also a positive way to be blessed by this, you know, God and Goddesses. That's how it works. So I don't want to waste a lot of time now because we are already out of schedule. So the most important thing for you have a pure intention, you know. Pure intention means pure intention means that to have compassion. Don't wish for yourself. Oh, I want to be rich. I want to be that. That's not a pure intention. Pure intention is like to have love and compassion. You know, may other beings be happy. Because as I don't want to be unhappy, others also don't want to be unhappy, right? So that's the pure intention. With that intention, there's a mantra. Um, Printed out on the uh, that photo, you know, and you chant the mantra. That's how you live a karmic. We see a karmic link, a karmic connection. We have built a karmic connection, right? Then you pray, and hopefully, let's say you know, good things happen in your life. Yeah, something about. It. Thank you very much.